Good morning, friends, and welcome to our Lenten journey, Faith on the Move. Today, we begin our fourth week in Lent, our third Sunday, March the 7th. It is entitled, A Lament for the Lost and the Last. And today, I'm reading Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the populars we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of those songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down to its foundations. Daughter Babylon, doomed to destruction, happy is the one who repays you according to what you have done to us. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. Let us begin with prayer. God, forgive us for forgetting that the rivers of Babylon are not that far away. Their rivers flow near our churches, our neighborhoods, our schools, and our workplaces. Through land cut up by roads and highways, housing developments and strip malls, obscured by our settler way of life, they flow. Help us to hear the lament of the lost and the last in our city, our country, and our world. And with them, let us cry out, how can we sing the Lord's song? May those of us who have benefited from the rivers of Babylon become unsettled in our privilege and prosperity. Open rooms not only in our hearts, but also in our homes. Not only in our sermons, but also in our sanctuaries. Give us courage to stand with those who have been harmed and to sing a new song. Come, you are welcome here. And today, our reflection is offered to us by Julie McGonigal. And she entitles her reflection, Travel Story. The rivers of Babylon are in my midst. I live on the shores of Lake Simcoe, about an hour north of Toronto. Until recently, I didn't know the history of this place or the treaties, so many of them broken, that were agreed upon between the Ojibwe people and the government leaders. In the early spring of 2019, Lurching across patches of melting ice, I made my way to a cabin in the middle of Springwater Provincial Park in Midhurst, where I sat and listened to an oral historian and former chief, Jeff Montague, recalling in startling detail the complex history of his area. His ancestors were nomadic. The early Canadian government pressured the Ojibwe people to give up their nomadic ways and settle at cold water in the early 19th century. Then, when the government wanted those fertile tracts of land for itself, it moved them to Beaujolais Island in 1842. But then the government wanted that land too, so it forced them to move again, this time to Christian Island where they remain. It's not easy to generate income on an island, and travel to and from the mainland is precarious, especially in the winter. Most of the people who inhabit this area know nothing about the history. This newfound knowledge must become the foundation for fighting racist, colonist history of this land. Psalm 137 is a lament saturated with violent imagery that ends with an expression of rage. It's more of a protest song and has inspired many than a pulpit material for a staid Sunday worship. It is also a call to action, a call to step out of our comfort zone and stand on the side of the oppressed as people of faith. 
here is some reflections for you that you can offer in the silence of your heart or you can offer in a journal. Psalm 137 acknowledges that it's human to feel distress, grief, and rage. What makes your heart break? And how could that breaking become a desire for justice? And if you were to search the paths in your neighborhood and city or town, where would you find injustice? And where might you be called to serve? And lastly, how could the church step out of its comfort zone to join the protests of justice movements? My friends, thank you for today, and I will see you tomorrow.